Okay. So what a nose is, so we've been practicing noses front view. So front view, the nose looks like triangle, triangle. No matter where the shadow is. If the shadow is on this edge here, you have this triangle, and then you have this triangle still. This triangle here helps you find where the nostrils are. So let's bring that down. <laughs> okay, so you have this nostril here guided by this triangle. This, this is what I usually what I do. I find this an original bridge area. I find the nostrils that I want. So this basically you should be doing this too. The nostrils help you decide how wide you want the nose to be. After I find the nostrils, I find the nostril holes. If it's a very feminine looking girl, I try to keep the nostrils small. So remember, remember that whole speech I gave you about what's cute and what's not cute? When a when a girl is cute, she has a bunny like nose. <laughs> okay, especially when a baby is cute. See that cuteness right here? This can be represented. Oh my god, it's so cute. This can be represented um, through. This can be a realistic version. You can make a realistic version of this. Um, okay, that's really weird. What the fuck is that? Um, sorry, I'm going to keep it here. Um, so essentially, what this means is that the mouth is tiny. You have a tiny little one hole to represent the mouth, and tiny little strokes to represent the, the face. So. If knowing this, you can make a very cute nose. Or you can make a very not cute nose by breaking all the rules of the cute nose. So you either learn one side in order to learn the other. So you have to, you, if to know white, you have to know black. And to know black, you have to know white. Um, if you know what I mean by that. So what I'm doing now is trying to create sort of half cute, half not cute, sort of a normal looking nose. So you see how a couple of strokes created a nose? For most of you, this is enough for your style. These couple strokes is enough for your style for most of you. Um, so basically, um, nose, uh, nostril lines to represent where the nostrils are. A couple of lines for the nostril holes. I'm not drawing a whole circle. I'm not going to draw a whole circle that's oval like. I only need a couple lines to show that the nostril is there um, because I'm not doing this. Then that's really, really big nostrils. Um, if you were if you were to have to draw someone's nose and you can only recreate it by doing this, and that person has a very very flat nose, and the nostrils are literally showing a real normal I mean a real nose a normal nose, the nostrils are so downward pointing that all you see is a slit, and that's what we see here. Okay, remember that line line slit slit. Okay. Okay, basically. Open parentheses, close parentheses, comma, um, not comma, something, something. Practice that right now on your paper with me right now. Open parentheses, close parentheses, stroke, stroke. Everybody, I want to see everybody do this. Open parentheses, close parentheses, stroke, stroke. I don't want this to be like a step that you guys don't understand. Do you see how quickly we read? This reads. It reads because this is what we see when we see a nose. We see the slits, I mean the, the nostril edges, and then we see the slits. Basically, it's about trying to, I don't know if you guys have, <laughs> that looks like someone's sticking their face on the table. Um, basically, uh, I really recommend you guys read Scott, Scott McCloud's um, Understanding Comics. He really talks about how to minimalize a face and how quickly a face reads. Even this is seen as a face but it's seen as a more universal face than, you know, someone with like beautiful, like, you know, like shadows and you have the nose here and then you have that and then you have the hair. Okay. So let's continue with the nose. So this basically I managed to create this. So when I, when you draw a face and you go in and you want to put the nose, don't just put open parentheses, stroke, stroke. No, don't do that. Guns <laughs> and noses. Um, Okay, what was that? Um, what I recommend is finding your symmetry line to help you find your form or shape and then drawing the triangles that I drew because when you draw the triangles you know you're supposed to put two nostrils but you don't know where. The, the triangles let you know where to put them. So this here where this triangle's bottom meets this triangle's bottom is where the two nostrils go. So take that down.
open parentheses, close parentheses, and then you have stroke. And then finally, this I added this shadow here. This shadow represents that this part of the triangle is underneath. Sorry, this part of, of the triangle is underneath it, underneath the light. It's It looks like this from the side. This area here that we just painted with the triangle, triangle, this looks like this from the side. Okay, and then you have the lips. Okay, it's a really weird looking face. But that's basically what I mean. This area here sticks out. People have trouble painting a nose that sticks out. At least I have trouble painting a nose that sticks out. Um, they try, they, they draw it and it looks very flat because they don't practice it enough and they don't understand that there's shapes underneath. So this is part one of what a, how to draw a nose. Part two is, basic, what I mean by part one is how to draw a nose that reads basic level cartoon half realism. So open parentheses, close parentheses, and then two strokes for the nostrils. If you want to take it to a more realistic form, you have to start drawing the bridge. Um, the bridge of the nose is if you were to look at the sides, no tr no problem, hello, no problem. Um, so you have this part of the triangle, sorry, I know what I just did there. This part of the triangle, you have the triangle here, like we said before. These are very familiar, these are very familiar triangles to you. This triangle's name is Bob, very nice guy, very cute. He has his two kids, cute family. His wife is pregnant with, you know, three kids already. I mean, with another kid, he's going to have three kids. He's a very nice guy. Bob is very good. He's a good neighbor. This guy's name is Steve. Steve is very nice, too. Let me introduce you to Bob and Steve. Okay? Bob and Steve are your best friends when you want to draw noses. I don't want you guys to forget about Bob and Steve. One is your neighbor on your left, and one is your neighbor on your right. Um, they're very nice. Please don't forget them. They're not weird. They're not hard. They're not scary. They're not... You know, these are triangles that you've learned in your, in your, um, oh, wow. Steve is actually secretly with me. No, okay. I didn't know that. That's very weird. People do weird things nowadays. So these two triangles are just triangles, you guys. This is elementary stuff. You have triangle number one, triangle number two, okay? This is the base. This is where your two nostrils meet. You know how you have nostril number one, you have that nice little bone here? You have to show that cartilage. This is where this is where they meet. This is the bridge. This is what I'm talking about. I don't know what this cause is called. It's an anatomical name for this place where the two nostrils meet. This area is an extension of the bridge. So that when you have the eyes on this side, let me try to create some whoa. Let me try to create some like normal eyes. Okay, when you have the eyes, and this is the bridge, this area here is all above this area. This area is, is hollow. This, I don't know how to describe it. I wish I had some plasticine and I could just stick my face <laughs> through your monitor and show you what I mean. This all goes down. And it goes back up and it goes down. Goes back up, goes down, goes back up, goes down, up. This entire area is lifted and then it eventually evens out and then your lips start and then go back up and a little bit and then go down a little bit okay indented downward hollow valleys whatever these are protected your eyes are protected by the bone structure of your cheekbones and your brow bones and your brow bones your brow is even less in level than your nose. Your nose sticks out more than your brow no brow bone does so it has more color it has more light pushed in, it's indented, thank you Matthias. Um, uh, yes, <laughs> you must draw sphinxes forever. Um, the reason why I'm talking about this extension here, this raising point, is when you do a three-quarter view and you want to draw a character from the side, you're going to have to understand that part of the eye is, is covered up, that part of the cheekbone here is going to cover it up by the nose, because the nose is sticking out. Imagine this person's face is particularly okay. This person's nose is going like this. It's gonna cover. This is what I'm talking about. This is the bridge, right here. Okay. This is represented by Bob. 
Bob is very nice. Okay, so this Bob here, as soon as he meets Steve, there's a circle. This circle is known as the tip of the nose. Um, no, no problem. Um, toxic Canada. I mean, Toxic Panda. Um, no problem. Sorry, I don't have my glasses. Toxic Panda, is that right? The circle is Steve's wife, who's also cheating on him with Bob, I think. I don't know what the story is. Um, so this circle here, it represents, should represent the tip of the nose that you're drawing. Okay, so I'm going to break down the nose to you in a couple steps. Bob, Steve, line, this is the road. Okay, this is called Symmetry Road, on which Bob and Steve live in their newly renovated homes. Okay, you've got open parentheses, close parentheses, open parentheses, stroke, stroke, and then the promiscuous wife. Okay, many of you here are visual thinkers, so when I want to keep things visual, I wish I had a better story for you. <laughs> this is the great Gandalf, and this is Aragorn, and this is the two kingdoms united, and this, I don't know, give yourself a story, you guys. Do you see how all of a sudden things look like a nose? Things look like a nose. When you have light source coming out of here, all you have to do is get your brush and brush that area with the light source. You have another light source, okay, fine. Get your brush and brush this area another light source. And then if it's this area is even darker, get your thing to show the bridge of the nose. Because remember, it's not a perfect triangle. This isn't a triangle. If I was looking at this person and they were like looking up, their nose isn't tipped like this. It's not perfectly triangular. There's a little, little squareness to it. So remember that squareness is the tip of the nose here. So if I were to go in and color this person, let's say that I just draw the nose only. So let me get a good base. Okay. Wow, major lag. Let me get myself a good dark gray. Okay. I'm going to start stroking off the sides. See how much of a nose I can get. From that, I'm going to find a little bit of a groove here. And then open parentheses, a little more shadow. Get it? I can draw the open parentheses with more strokes than one stroke, but I'm still necessarily drawing the open parentheses. Second parentheses, close parentheses. Stroke for the nose. Still, I'm still drawing the strokes, but what I'm, what I'm doing is that I'm spending a little more, more time. That's basically what it means when you render something. Okay. And then I'm going to connect them to, and then carry off into this shadow. This shadow represents here that this nose is pointing downward. Okay, sharpen things up a bit. Find the nostrils. Shade things up the way you see them in real life. How, how do you see them? And then change them to your style. Shade that off a bit because it's not perfectly triangular, so it needs some sort of base color. And then find the bridge, get a nice light source color. Top of the nose, top of the nose. And work with references. Uh, right now I'm drawing a very generic, it almost looks like it's rhinoplasty, you know? Um, but work, find some references and discover different ways. But essentially, every nose is broken down into Bob, Line, Steve, and Wife. Okay, um, why do your noses have such a b big bump at the tip of the nose? I think that's cute. That's why I put that there. I think that's cute. I don't know. I do that a lot because I I think it's cute. I think it's adorable. Button noses, you know. That's what I like in my my in my art. Um, when I draw other kinds of noses, I find that they're not they don't they don't serve me as much glamour as I would like in that specific piece. Sometimes I draw a face just to draw the face. It's very very fun for me. Um, I, I find it. I don't know. I find that art that you don't want to draw is just as important as art as you want to draw. That you want to draw. Let me keep moving that upward. Get another light source. A little bit lighter. The, the, the bump is cute. Like, I don't know. I like the bump. I think it's adorable. 
not so much a bump as like because from the side I'm just trying to show that the side has sort of a, a little bump okay, maybe not like that like a little bump I like this bump this shadow here is what this bump is because the light is coming off here it's gonna cast a tiny little little bump oh well <laughs> if you think it's creepy <laughs> that's your that's your that's your choice what do they call it? That's your vindict. What's your? I don't know what that word is. Okay, so do you see how this nose is slowly emerging? I can take it to another level of realism. I can keep going. For those who are only starting off early, use this example. Use this form. At least be able to draw this nose. Um, and you can, as long as you get to know and shake Bob's hand and Steve's hand and you know serve them dinner, get some squash. I don't know what you neighbor people do. <laughs> okay, and then the tip of the lips will bounce off light so that it can reveal this part of the nose. And there we have it, a nose. We still have the ball. I mean, we still have Bob. We still have Steve. We still have the wife. And then there it is. If you don't want to show the wife as much, sh um, shave some of those parts off. And slowly it will emerge into a different nose, which is why I'm saying find other noses, Michael. Find other noses that you that inspire you. You know, if you want to be an artist about noses, only about noses, you're gonna to have to find different noses to work with. Now get your black, because remember the, the nose is one of the darkest areas in the face. The nose, the nostrils, and sort of draw the nose in. And then the lips follow. And then draw the corner of the lips first. Always draw the corner of the lips first. And draw the tip. Draw the lips. The the bottom. And these simple lines. So I'll get into ne lips next time and I'll introduce you to who lips are. Um, one is Violet. One is Cassandra. <laughs> ew. Um, I'm sorry I said ew. I knew a girl named Cassandra. She was bully. Um, and then I'll, I'll introduce you to that later. But for now, just please focus on the nose area. So if you don't like my style, this is up to you. This is your vindic... V verdict. I don't know what that word is. God, this is your... Uh, what is that word? God. This is your This is your desire. This is your art. Um, what is it? What's that word? Vindictus? No. <laughs> It's not that word. Verbatim. No, it's not that word. Um, this is not verdict. It's not verdict. Prerogative. I think it's prerogative, Lathar. I think... How did you know? I think it is. I think it is prerogative. Yeah, it is prerogative. Damn, how did you know that? Okay. This is your choice. If you want to take the style, go ahead. If you don't, don't. Um, but I recommend if you have just started painting and doing these things follow Bob and Steve. Bob and Steve will get you a nose. They'll give you a nose. As le at least they'll be have a nose. And if you want to use realism, you'll at least understand a nose because there's a Bob and a Steve in every nose. Um, vertebrae. <laughs> uh, the tithe. <laughs> it's prerogative, but what do you mean by the tithe? Okay, and then do you see how this nose reads? This nose reads. It's a visible nose. So for those who are having trouble painting noses, please remember today's class. It's not hard. It's easy. I did it in front of you. At least I had a nose, you know. If this nose is not what you want, again, it's your prerogative. It's my prerogative too. Go find nose that you like. Find a model that whose face you particularly think is beautiful. Copy her. Have her inspire you. Um, many artists out there have a specific muse, a specific form of beauty that they want to duplicate in their work. I know this one artist, Jace Wallace, all his drawings look exactly the same. All the faces look exactly the same. And there's no problem with that because that's the style that he chooses. He chooses that. And he's inspired by um, by that actress that is very, very boring. Remember I was talking about her. Um, Zoe Deschanel or something. Yeah, yeah. 
So he's very, very inspired by her face, and he duplicates her face a lot in his work. So do you do that too? Nothing is, nothing is stopping you. Just understand from today that every nose can be broken down into a triangle that's standing upright, an upside down triangle for represent the nose and the nostrils, and a um, and uh, open parentheses, close parentheses for the for the for the nostrils and um, two slits for the for the nostril noses, the actual cavities. Okay. All noses need a bob and a Steve. Every single nose. Let me let me prove that to you. Nose. I hope they don't give us stuff with boogers in it. <laughs> okay. Bob. Steve, open parentheses, close parentheses, and a very, very fat wife. Okay. Bob, Steve, open parentheses, close parentheses, and slit, slit, and a very squarish, slender wife. Okay. Give him girl names. I don't know. Bob and Steve came up. Oh, man, this guy's nose broke. Not sure about... <laughs> See, now they're coming up with weird, creepy-looking noses. Bob, Steve, open parentheses, close parentheses, wider slits for the nose because the nostrils stand out wider, and then you have a very almost flat wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do you guys see how I'm breaking it down? Triangle, triangle. Now, this is front view, okay? Don't go using Bob and Steve for... I mean, it works for, for three quarter views, but don't start they're using perfect triangle for Bob and Steve for two quarter, I mean, three quarter view, uh, because Bob and Steve look a little bit di different from three quarter view. Why? Because they're not perfectly flat triangles. When we use three quarter view, what happens? When a three quarter view happens, what happens, you guys? I know you can tell me. It has to do with form. I would love if people I'm here. And here, I actually started using Bob and Steve's actual terms when describing noses to others. <laughs> no, not foreshortening. There's nothing for being foreshortened. Mostly because I'm Arab. Or probably because I'm Arab. Um, volume. Mm -mm. Some, well, yes, volume, of course. Um, that happens when something is considered. What is considered when something has volume? Something has mass. When something has mass, it must be represented through form. When form is represented, there's a 3D quality. <laughs> no, Alric. No, 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 Alric. It's, it's, you were right. You were right. Don't humph. Don't pout. Okay, so when, when Bob and Steve are from the side views, I don't want to overflow with energy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't want to overpower you with information. I don't know why I said overflow with energy. Okay, but what you do is you have three-quarter view. Okay. Okay, so these are the symmetry lines. In three quarter view they'd be a little bit tilted because of the face shape. Okay, so we have face shape here. And we have circle for the eyes, and then smaller circle for the other eye because it's kind of well, a little bit foreshortened, but not so much, not so significantly. Just a tiny little bit of flattening. And then you have Bob. Perfect distance between the two eyes. So you have this and this. this. And this. Okay, so you found the symmetry line, and now you know where to draw Bob. So remember, you can easily have foreshortening, and then you, I mean, um, you have the side view, the three quarter view, and then you put Bob and Bob is like right there, perfectly straight, as if you're looking at him straight. No. You're supposed to put the symmetry lines so that you know where to put Bob in symmetry between the two eyes. Because depending on how fat Bob is, that's where you put the two parentheses for the nostrils. Okay? So let me erase that so you guys can see. So you have the symmetry line, we have Bob, and then we have the bottom of Bob. Okay, and then we have Steve. Let's make Steve here a little bit. Okay? But the wife is put somewhere else. Why? Because the bottom of Steve and Bob looks like this. Okay? Steve is actually the flat version, which is the shadow. Steve can also be the shadow as much as the nostril base. And I don't know how to describe it without a 3D model. 
Okay, let me try to draw it as if it was on the ground. Okay, so this is triangle number one. This is a nose as if you took it off a human's face and you played it on the table flat. Okay, this is Steve, and this entire sur sur like surface area is Bob. Okay, so with the wife, when the wife is there, you have to follow the surface area of the nose. So this is the symmetry line, which is the bridge. The bridge doesn't go off straight like this, the way the symmetry line does it. Don't get confused with the symmetry line of the face. Um, and the symmetry line of the nose because the nose comes out of the face so the symmetry line of the face follows the nose so you have to erase this line that helped us find where Bob was and it follows on top of the nose why because the nose sticks out and then now we know where to put the wife after this class feel free to change these terms as much as you want because I'm not very fond of them. Okay, so you see? And then we have the opening of the bridge on the two sockets, the bridge moving down, and then we have the top, and now we have a nose from the side. Did everyone see that? Mm-hmm. So what I didn't do is that I didn't follow the symmetry line here and then draw a nose that looks directly to the camera. No, I drew a symmetry line that follows on top of Bob and downward towards Steve where our two nostrils meet. Everybody has a Bob and a Steve, okay? Sometimes Bob and Steve fight and the nose doesn't look very, very flattering. Sometimes they're perfectly in harmonious piece and the nose looks very beautiful. What I mean is symmetry. Sometimes the nose bridge isn't so big, it's not so bumpy, um, things look pretty, pretty proportioned and that's the glamour rules that I'm telling you about. Everything, the glamour rules basically means that everything that measures are very, very beautiful. Okay, so basically it's e very easy to draw a beautiful person. All I have to do is make sure all the me measurements are proportionate. M meaning the line for the eyes is equal to the line for the nose and equal to the line with the eye and which is equal to the distance which is the length of the lips. Which is what I talked about in the tutorial I did on eyes, how to draw eyes. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, here it is. This is the glam rule basically. The eyes still look big because you're following this. This red line is consistent throughout. Um, and why did I do that? It's the same length of the nose, keeps keeping it cute. Same distance between each eye. The same distance. So one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. And then one inch for the lips. So small lips means cute, which means beautiful. Get it? Just like that lecture I gave you guys last time about what's cute and what's beautiful and what's not cute. So this person's going to look very glamorous because everything here is proportionate. That's what I basically mean when I say um, proportionate. The eyes look very big under these under these measurements. They're not overshadowed by a large nose. And then lips. Lips is another day, of course. Let's start with the start with the corners. Follow the symmetry line. And then create a different face shape, I guess. I don't know what I'm drawing right now. Always try to take levels down a little bit so you could work better. been so long since I drew, I've been so busy, commissions and everything. So yeah, corners meet. Please don't be afraid to use these triangles, they're not scary, they just help you. Um, they assist and what you can't see, they help you find it.
Sorry, I'm getting a bit carried away. <laughs> I kind of like her face. And then I'll also talk about, eventually I'll talk about, um, after I guess after lips, I'll talk about how to merge the cheekbones and how to create cheekbones. Exactly same principles in makeup. How to make someone's cheekbones look a little more jagged or look a little more flattering or look a little more cute. Same, same stuff. Anyways, um, yes, nose, lips, and that's it.